And hello, I'm Dale Wilson, your host for Now You Know, and thank you for watching. Our special guest today is Susan Hilgren. Susan is the founder and director of Taffy, the answer for youth. Taffy is a very important agency here in Port Angeles in Collin County. They attempt to take care of some of the basic needs for the homeless community here. And I have been aware of and appreciative of Taffy for several years now. And I wanted to get Susan in to tell you a little bit about it. So Susan, welcome. Thank you for coming in to Now You Know. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, Taffy. Okay, thank you for having me here today. Glad to have you. So um, uh, I was born and raised here in Port Angeles. Okay. And um, I have a real feeling of ownership. And so when my kids were growing up and I moved back in 96, I was able to go to college and um, did an internship for a CDP and I got to go to juvenile services and spend now, what is, time. What is CDP? Chemical Dependency <coughs> Professional. Okay, okay. And I got to spend five days a week with the kids that came in and out of the juvenile system and um, talk with that about their addictions and families. And after a few months there, um, God spoke to me and said, Susan, someone has to take care of these kids. And um, I felt it. And um, from then, I started on a homeless task force. Once a week, I got with a group of people, walked the streets of Port Angeles, handing out food, letting the people know, you know, one of these days we'll have a place for you. I was lucky enough to be a part of Serenity House when we started the Dream Center. That was in 2004. I was there for about five years. Um, my friend Pam and I decided after five years that we could do this on our own. And so um, we created our own with a few other people, got aboard, did a 501c3 paperwork. And in um, 2009, October, we opened the doors to an old church where we had a drop-in center that was four days a week, four hours a day. And that was 2009. So talk about some of the services you, that you provide. Okay, so and we started out real, real slow. We started out with seven people who came through our door. And so we gave them some food and got them some socks. And in the eight years, it has grown exponentially. So now um, they can come in and have hot food. We've got cold food to go. They have hygiene products, shampoos, conditioners, toothpaste, toothbrushes, tampons, all kinds of soaps, detergents. Some people actually have uh, washers and dryers at where they're at. They don't have any soap to wash. Mm -hmm. So we have a clothes closet for all ages because some of these people have babies. Some of them have toddlers. So we do that. So if folks out there have some clothes that they're casting off, they might be thinking of taking them somewhere, you would love to have them at your Good place, usable clothes, absolutely. Um, no fashion stuff, no high heels, just some good street stuff that would keep the people warm. Now, as you know, I visited your place uh, a couple of times, and almost every time I've been there, there's been a family with very small children there. Are these homeless people too? Um, some are homeless, some are living with friends, some are living with cars, and a lot of them actually were homeless. They got clean and sober with interacting with us, and they come back because now we're their family, and we're their wow. grandparents, and wow. we're their stability. When anytime they have something that they're proud of, they just walk through our doors and they Oh, Grandma, look what I did. So. <laughs> now, once I was out there, there was actually a birthday celebration going on. Talk about uh, the celebrations that you have out there. Um, well, we do all of the holidays, but if you come in and say it's going to be your birthday, Pam Fosnes, the other half of Taffy, um, will always make sure that she gets whatever cake you want, and she will make sure that you have that cake. But um, we do all the holidays. Um, people provide money for Christmas, so we make sure that it's a big Christmas party at the First Baptist Church with Santa. Then we have Easter, where we fill um, 2,500 eggs and have it at Jesse Webster Park, and then we go to First Baptist for dinner that time. 2,500 eggs? Yes, it's a lot of plastic eggs. And, so. Oh, okay, I was <laughs> going to say, did they find them all? No, yeah, they're, and, and a lot of people who get to hide the eggs have never hidden eggs before. So, I mean, it's, it's a new experience for them. And when the kids come and find eggs, they can find 30 or 40. They, it's a big bunch and they feel good. And this is wonderful because I, I know coming from dysfunctional families, they may not get these celebrations and Easter egg hunts and Christmas presents. So Christmas and tradition. Hunts. And so you get to yes. instill, instill those traditions into their lives for them to carry on to them. Absolutely. Fourth of July, we always do a parade, um, a float for the parade. And so everybody gets to help decorate it and, and we do that. Thanksgiving again, we're at the um, uh, First Baptist Church. We do that. So funerals, anytime somebody passes away, if they don't have money or if the kids, you know, the family doesn't, we can even have the funeral at our place or we'll find a place. We have paid for their clothing for the deceased, the food, the decorations. When somebody passes, 
everybody, it needs to happen. It needs to happen respectfully and, and with love. And, and we do that. And we also do weddings. Wow, so, that's great. <laughs> if they're willing to get married, we're willing to do it. Terrific. I know you must have to have a lot of help with this, and I think you're the only actual uh, staff member, so you must have a lot of volunteers. Talk about your volunteers. Again. Absolutely. We probably have a good dozen solid volunteers. <coughs> and when you offer to volunteer at Taffy, uh, they say, well, what do you want me to do? And I say, you do whatever you want to do. You find <laughs> your gift, because then you're going to be happy, and you're going to be able to share that happiness with the clients. So we have some people who just come in and do dishes. We have some that maintain, Dwayne Morris maintains the, um, the clothing closet and does all the Goodwill runs and he runs to Costco. Martin Shaughnessy, he's the wonderful man that gave us money to be able to buy our new building. Wow. And um, he's the recovery person. If you want to go to Reflections Counseling on a Tuesday or Thursday, he's the one who's going to pick you up and get you out there. He'll get you to a meeting. He'll meet you down at um, Department of Motor Vehicles if you want an ID. He's that running person. He loves to do that. And he loves to visit with the kids. And so he goes out when they're smoking and just kind of chats with them. And, and he's our hygiene person. So when you write a request for him that you need certain items, you put it so on the board. Blades, toothbrush, toothbrush, any of those things, he goes and gets that. And he takes a little bag and he fills it up and, and gives it to you. And diapers of any sizes. Now you just mentioned your new place. I've been there and I really am pleased with what you've got going there. Tell them about your new place. Okay. Um, Martin was uh, nice enough to give us some money. And so in November we were able to buy it and we were in the 26th of December. So we bought Gross's Nursery. So um, we're doing an $80,000 remodel with $20,000. So everybody's working for free. <laughs> That's just kind of how we roll. And um, so upstairs, we now have a clean and sober family room. So people who come in and eat downstairs and then have some young kids can go upstairs with a volunteer and just sit in a quiet space that has toys and, and it's safe. We have a uh, kitchen up there that I hope that um, we are able to do cooking classes with stuff that they grow in the garden. Wow. And we have a nurse's room. Pam, who um, has been there with me the whole time, is a critical care nurse, and Betsy Wharton has just come on board. Mm -hmm. And so between those nurses, we always have a nurse on board. Wow, they can right. talk to the kids about their anxiety, about their issues, do wound care, talk about... Um, what we want to do is divert you from going to the ER. If you come in and you've got something, and they can look at it, they can talk with you, they can get your symptoms and probably say, let's wait a while or yeah, you need to go. And we're so now- So that right there is probably saving hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Oh, if absolutely. you can divert people from the emergency room. Yes, and now Vimo Clinic has come alongside and has given the paperwork to the nurses now so they can do intakes anytime we're open. Because Vimo only does intakes on Wednesday. Right. But if you're there at Taffy on a Saturday night and I say, do you have a regular doctor? And they say, no then I can get them hooked up with the nurses and they do, do that so we can get them a regular doctor. So if they go into the ER and the, and the nurse or doctor says, do you have a regular doctor? They go, yeah. And they're bonafide, <laughs> you know, they feel like a real person and yeah, that's what yeah. it's about. And I'm sure you help them, uh, the ones that come in uh, for the first time, if they don't have uh, identification or uh, if they're not hooked up with a, 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 a health insurance or something like that, I'm sure you can help them. Well, the Vimo, the Vimo Clinic is, is, does okay. the health insurance stuff, okay. but the nurse gets connected. Um, we will order birth certificates and pay for those. We do the identification, driver's license. We've done CPR classes, certification for um, CNAs we've paid for. We've done a couple of CDLs. So you're actually getting them in, 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 in the uh, pipeline to go right back to work? Absolutely. If you come in and you need work clothes and we don't have anything upstairs, we'll meet you over at Goodwill and help you buy that. A young man came in last night and needed some skid-free shoes. So we will go and make sure. We, we're, we're no barrier. Skid-free you know, shoes? Skid-free shoes. Oh, I, skid don't know, free, skid free, yeah, I don't know where he's going, <laughs> but he doesn't want to slip. <laughs> Maybe he's a dancer. Yes. Uh, you were talking about your uh, uh, good association with Serenity House, and uh, uh, Doc uh, Robbins has uh, really taken charge. I think he's hit the ground running there. Talk about the relationship between the Taffy and the uh, Serenity House now. And, and, it, and it's absolutely wonderful. For years, because I was an employee of Serenity House and then quit and made my own, it kind of caused a lot of chaos, which I didn't like, it, you know, but I did what I had to do. And since um, Doc has been out at Serenity House, I've been able to go to meetings and provider meetings, and it's just we're working together. We sat the other night at a meeting and talked about how um, I can help his clients. In fact, one of the um, grants that we just... Taffy just got from the port 
talks about using clients from Serenity House and Reflections to work in a grow and go project where we're going to put in a greenhouse and then work with a specific amount of kids, get them into um, treatment, get them a YMCA pass, get a CPR, ID, all of that. And so, you know, that's been one of my concerns since uh, I've been living in Port Angeles, and that is the uh, isolated nature of so many of the agencies. Uh, Serenity's out there doing their thing, you're over here doing your thing, Vimo's doing their thing. But it looks like you have been a catalyst to bring a lot of these agencies together for common good. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. I think it's because we don't worry about the money. We want the relationship. If we have a relationship, then it's going to benefit our clients, and that's what we want. Great. Uh, about how many regular clients do you have now? We probably have no less than 50 a day walk through the door. Uh, some days it's been up to 80, but that's, and that's over four hours, so right. we never have probably you know 25 at a time. But 80 is a lot that really stretches us. I want to thank you for your invitation to your open house this past Saturday, and I apologize I could not get free to get you to be there, but I know my wife did, and she had some great reports from us. Tell, about, tell us about your recent open house. Oh, it was um, on Saturday, and uh, we had like 200 people, so I was wow. just really excited. Um, but they were able to come and see the whole project. We've got two great big ADA bathrooms that my husband's doing the remodel on. And so those are getting close to done. And outside we have a greenhouse, which has got starts that when we were at the Project Homeless Connect and then also at the Kids Fest, we took um, seeds and dirt. And so the community got to plant some plants. And so those are actually germinating out in our greenhouse. We have a place for raised beds. We have in the ground gardens. And then Wayne Rodell, will be selling plants and flowers to help sustain us financially. And that's kind of what we want to do. We want to be able to bring in money so we're not begging all the time because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> it, takes, it takes money. And then also to be able to get the kids out there that are capable. Because you don't, and you, you've got to be careful who you put out there in your dirt. You know, so. We're going to come right back in just a moment and talk more about the uh, garden center. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Our guest today is Susan Hildren, who is the founder and director of Taffy, the Answer for Youths. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Now You Know. I'm your host, Dale Wilson. Our special guest today is Susan Hildren. She is founder and director of The Answer for Youth, also known as Taffy. Tell me this, what are some of the challenges that Taffy faces, and, and I mean the ongoing challenges as well as the big challenges? What, what are some of those? Um, well, it's always having volunteers enough to make mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm. that the, the dishes are done and, and, you know, cleanup is done and, and that the kids have somebody to talk to because, you know, just a volunteer, we need you to just come in and sometimes just sit and just listen, yeah. it, 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 to listen to their stories and, and validate their existence. That's a huge challenge because they all need, they all need to be important and they all need to be recognized. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that you experience some uh, public relations challenges because uh, as, as I move about around town, I, I hear uh, how uh, these uh, horrible towns are sending all of their homeless people up here to, to uh, Port Angeles to take advantage of these good services. Now, uh, as I look around and the more and more of the, uh, and, and I love the, the uh, what somebody said at the council meeting the other, the unhoused, we're not mm -hmm. going to call them homeless anymore, the unhoused. Uh, all of them, not all of them, 90% of the ones I talked to grew up in Port Angeles, graduated high school in Port Angeles, had good jobs in Port Angeles, jobs went away in Port Angeles, and there just hasn't been jobs to replace them. So uh, how do you overcome that, that stigma about all of these outsiders coming in here and taking up our services? Um, it's frustrating because I know, I went to school with these kids as parents and mm -hmm. grandparents, they are ours. And it just really frustrates me. And one of these days, I'm going to take Jamie Weisk up and we're going to go walk and we're going to ask every business, do you import? Because I want to be able to go to the public and say, I've asked everybody. And everybody said no. Well, give us some lead time. We'll try to get a Papa camera to go with you <laughs> and see if we can uh, yeah. record it like that. Because it's important. People need to know that these are our people. These, the, and, and there's not, there, you're not going to accomplish anything good by just shuffling them down the street and trying to get them out of sight and out of mind. You've no. Got, it's, it's a problem, it's, it's an issue we're going to have to deal with, and thank God there's people like you and Vimo and some others that are, that are dealing yeah. with it. Yeah, and it's all trauma. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Th they're, they're, 
we have an addiction issue because we've been traumatized and um, parents get real defensive sometimes and say, you know, well, I was a good parent. I was a good parent too, but a couple of my kids were traumatized because I can't be with them 24-7. Yeah, yeah. You know, things just happen. And we do have three styles of homeless. We have mental health homeless, which are really tough to deal with. We have clean and sober homeless, and we have addict homeless. You can't put them all together. Right. You know, you, you have to respect who they are and, and treat them all different. And everybody wants us just to all put them in one room and, and treat them like they're the same thing. And, and they're not even close. But now, of course, you will have some with multiple diagnosis. So um, that takes... Co-occurring disease. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so that requires another uh, skill level and another uh, mm -hmm. uh, level of, of care and uh, uh, treatment. I'm, I'm yes, sure. and a system that can keep them accountable and help watch mm -hmm. them. That's, that we, we don't have that. You know, they're treated and left out on their own. With your new garden uh, uh, capabilities out there, are you going to try to make that something that they can work at? So Absolutely, 100% dirt therapy, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 there's real proof that there's microbes in the, in the soil. And when you touch the soil, it goes into your body, into your brain, and makes your brain feel happy. And so we're gonna do, you know, dirt and not drugs. Great. And get those kids out there, and the young adults and the babies, because we do up to the age of 35 well, in that, order to... Sounds like a great bumper sticker, dirt yeah. not drugs. Yeah, yeah, and it will work. What are some of your needs besides just the basics, besides uh, a little money and a little, you know, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all those? What are some other uh, needs you have? Maybe uh, starter plants? Uh, I, I don't know. What, what, what do you need there um, that, that somebody watching today could provide? Could provide. Well, I suppose uh, raspberry plants, okay. you know, strawberry okay. yeah. plants, yeah. anything that you're digging up that's high quality, good stuff. Now, strawberries would be good money makers too. They could be. And just even for the kids to eat, it would be yeah. nice. Yeah. So stuff that's quality like that, I suppose little baskets, you know, transplant things that we have, good soil, uh, maybe a volunteer that wants to come in and do that with them, How you cool know. How would that be to get a, yeah. a gardener volunteer that uh, maybe you could uh, contact uh, Andrew May mm -hmm. with the... Uh, uh, who is a, a professional horticulturist. And you know, that's, that might be something else. Uh, the nursery that was there before had uh, ornamental horticulture mm -hmm. and uh, somebody that could uh, weigh in on some of that because there are probably some opportunities to grow yeah. that sort of thing there too. Yeah, there'll be a lot yeah. of different stuff. And Wayne Rodell has taken care of us really just awesome. Well, you've got a, a, a yeah. great place there. And yeah, and Betsy Horton's a gardener and mm -hmm. Pam Fosnes is a gardener and mm -hmm. Dwayne is a gardener. And Betsy and even uh, has a uh, pickle. Well, we're thinking about helping her grow pickles there yeah, and excellent. then she can do the canning. So it, we don't know how far it can go, but we just know that it has to go somewhere because what the United States has done with our homeless is we've kept them alive but we haven't moved them to the next level and that's where they need they need a level to go to now this is going to sound like an ignorant question do you actually grow pickles or is there some other uh, cucumber in, oh the cucumbers yeah and you, you, uh, yeah, you, you put them in okay. a brine and yeah make okay. pickles thank you I needed that <laughs> and I grew up in the country I wouldn't show you oh recently the uh, city council uh, entertained in fact they're probably entertaining now the idea of changing the zoning uh, which, uh, as I read it, and, and my understanding of the, the uh, theory behind it, is to try to keep the social service agencies out of sight. And, uh, of course, you know there's the uh, uh, Health and Human Services right downtown. You've got the Lee Hotel uh, downtown. You've got uh, several service agencies that are right there. And my understanding is that they want to uh, pass zoning issues to where these people will never be able to get a building permit to uh, uh, remodel or expand because they're going to be out of code, the new code, and they're going to have to move. Now, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what do you think about that? How is it affecting you and what do you think about it overall? Well, it kind of frustrates me because um, here I am doing a gift for Port Angeles by helping take care of these 